What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we are going to be talking all about progression. Whether you're brand new, whether you're trying to figure out what you need to do to get stronger, we're going to give you the tips that you need so you can improve the power of your characters. Quickly progress through the game and put yourself in a position where you can win. So I started this game out guys, I made a ton of mistakes because uh, it's a fresh game. Fortunately the gearing system is very similar to a game that I play a lot of which is Epic 7. Shouts out to Epic 7. But it's really easy to get sucked into this game due to the quality of this game it being so good and because there's so much to do it's also very easy to get lost. Now, while I was getting lost, wasting all of my summons, precious resources, and stuff like that trying to figure it out, I figured out along the way what's the most efficient way to progress, and if I have to do it all over again, which I will once open beta comes out, <laughs> it'll be a lot smoother process, and I'm going to share that with you guys today. So, first off, foremost, guys, you're going to start out. You'll be somewhere on a mysterious beach with them explaining the story to you and how everything that you need to do and what your destiny is in life. Now, the first things first, guys, is when you start the game out, just just follow the instructions. Um, in the beginning, you're typically just going to want to stick to the story. The adventurer's quests or the quests that they give you, the story quests for progression, are the best way to really get in and they'll explain everything to you along the way. Fast forward a little bit and they're going to introduce you to a goddess statue, which is the statue of the seven. And through the statue, this is going to be a very, very important thing for you guys because you're going to want to make sure you guys do these quests as frequently as possible. Is this a thing that you can focus on and be like, all right, I'm going to do nothing else but get the crystals that I need the animoculus to feed you know whatever corresponding statue because eventually there's going to be seven of these things due to seven elements of heroes in the game um, but this is something that you're going to do while you're doing other stuff um, I like to take the approach of doing multiple things to win so always have yourself in a position where you're winning in more ways than one so while you're following the quest line and you're out there you're gathering materials you're just going to keep an eye out for the stars on the map that indicate that there are any moculuses uh <laughs> hanging out or around so with that what that'll do is it'll increase your stamina bar when you start this game your stamina bar is gonna be super trash and you're gonna feel like the first decision that Mahoyo made was to make stamina low and you're gonna hate it but I have good news as you guys upgrade your statue it'll make your life a hell of a lot easier with more stamina you can achieve more things now in regards to basic combat when you guys are starting the game out Big thing is, it can be easy to be drawn into wanting to go kill monsters, but the amount of XP that you're going to get for killing standard mobs is abysmal. I don't think that farming regular mobs in the CBT or potentially even the full game is worth it just for the sake of farming XP, just because there's so many other ways to level your characters faster. So if you guys want to kill them to test out your combat skills, by all means, go for it. But in the beginning, try to stick to the tried and true, which is going to be following the story quest to get the progression that you need. Now, this brings me to my next point here. Now, as you guys are exploring the map, like I said, you always put yourself in a position where you guys can win in more ways than one. First thing you guys are going to be looking for as you guys travel are these little waypoints right here. They're marked by little arrows on the map. These arrows combined with these little statues will give you quite a bit of XP and you guys want to make sure that you guys go through the map. When you find them, get them. They're good XP and it makes it easier for you to traverse. As you guys go through and you continue in the beginning, you guys are going to run into an NPC who's going to provide you with a little bit of instruction on cooking. Now, the good thing about cooking is this. Cooking offers a bunch of unique benefits. You guys can find recipes around the world. You guys can buy recipes from shops and some of these come with some unique things like defense increase attack increase revives things like that what i recommend in the beginning until you guys get a designated healer in your party from your characters your draws whatever make sure you guys keep at least revive items on hand so steak it's like the easiest thing to make or eggs plus a certain amount of healing item once you guys have a healer and your healer is leveled up and she's she's you know taking it to the house for you guys then you guys can kind of slow down a little bit on the cooking unless you guys are into the cooking and you guys are using it for the beneficial effect now keep in mind the beneficial effects can be very very good for example this is an item here that increases your crit rate we got one that increases your attack by 31 to 44 and this is just a green recipe and they go all the way up to orange 
For example, the purple goes from 65 to 95 for 300 seconds. So if you guys are into the cooking, make sure you guys pay attention to the ingredients that they sell at both of the cooking shops. And you guys can stay on top of this if you guys are into cooking management. Fast forward a little bit and here we are. Make sure you guys pay attention to the Adventurers Guild because this is where you're going to get a majority of the good stuff. This is where you'll also get your daily quests eventually that you'll be able to do. As well as dispatch characters on expeditions for those pesky ingredients you may or may not need. The, the Adventurers guild will also give you a variety of quests that you guys can follow to keep you on track with the storyline ultimately leading you to periods of dark spots in the closed beta that I don't know if they're going to be dark spots like that in the actual open beta or the full release but that's where this guide comes in to tell you exactly what you need to do now here's the thing guys because you guys are so ambitious, I know that you guys are going to be gathering materials. You guys are going to be trying to figure out what you can and can't craft, uh, how to power up your equipment quicker, and, you know, all that good jazz. However, the thing that I recommend in the beginning is don't do what I did. So in the beginning, the question that I asked myself was, how do I get stronger faster, right? So... As soon as I got gear, essentially, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna level up my gear. I'm just gonna go as fast as I can. I'm just gonna spend all my resources, right? And what that ultimately led me to was a lack of resources and, of course, a lack of coin. What I did realize, though, is that you can get away with basically three star gear, which you'll get relatively quickly, and that will carry you over for quite a bit of time as you progress through the game. Case in point being, in the beginning, your three star gear can be very beneficial because you're just looking for the raw stat bonuses. Now, it can be easy to be confused when you guys see all these stats underneath the main stat, but what I ask you guys to do, especially in the beginning, is just pay attention to the main stat of your gear. Now, the main stat is just going to be this stat up here, base attack, right? And think about the types of characters you're going to build. If you guys are really uh, curious as to how to build characters based on what type of character they are, I have a more extensive guide that's going to be coming out after this one uh, that you guys can definitely watch. The link to that will be at the end of this video, so stay tuned to the end to get the link to that one but basically what's going to happen is you guys are just going to be focusing on the main stat so if your characters need attack power like if you're trying to deal a lot of damage you're just going to go for attack percent certain items come with specific stats like your feather here can only be attack power and then at this point you're just going to try to get one of these and just you know get it as high as you can with the resources that are allotted to you again you're not going to pay too much attention to these stats here until much much later in the game where you actually have more control over what type of gear that you're going to get not just through chess hunting for the flower it can only be hp for your cup if you're running a damage dealer you're looking at an attack percent if you're building a damage dealer right so some type of percentage and then the thing gets a little interesting when we get into the helmet and the helmet is its own beast because it could be all kinds of stats what i recommend for your helmet guys or your headband or whatever you guys got for your hat i recommend in the beginning going with the raw stat first so if you're building a tank, go for like defense percent or HP percent. If you're going for a damage dealer, then definitely go for attack percent. That's what you guys are looking for. Now, initially, since you guys in the beginning are only going to be paying attention to your base stat, the raw stats in the beginning is what's going to help you progress the fastest. Try not to make things so overly complicated on yourself when you start out the game. Another thing you guys are going to want to pay attention to when you guys are going through this, when you guys are selecting your party members and trying to figure out who you're going to play with or just going with the base party because this is the cheapest thing to do you guys are just going to make sure that you focus on your talents your talents are huge and you can collect materials from chess as you guys explore the world to upgrade these talents what these talents are going to do for you is they're just going to give you a raw damage increase and this is something that i neglected for a long time and it wasn't until i upgraded my talents that i saw the biggest jump in damage so if you have that favorite character let's say you're like me and you're only building like one or two characters initially to kind of you know consolidate your resources which was my initial intent but then I ended up building like a bunch of characters. Um, upgrading your talents can be the most effective way to see a big jump in your stats. So if your characters are not hitting that hard, look to your gear first. If your gear is plused, okay, and you have the right stats where they need to be, depending on the character that you're, you're building, then look to your talents, and then that's when you guys will see a significant damage increase from there you guys are like all right d well you you mentioned a lot about okay you know what kind of stats we should get on characters or you know what we should do in the game in general progression in the beginning but how do we get characters and that brings me to my next point you guys can see that i have a ton of characters and this is just what i recommend 
okay? If you guys are playing it super safe, stick with the characters that they give you in the beginning. They give you legit a solid team. You got main character who can pretty much be any element of the game based on the needs that you want, you know? Eventually, right right now, it's only water and earth. He'll have five of the ele elements that he can switch between. And then they're also going to give you Lisa, who is a lightning mage here that you can get. She, you, They give you some magic power. They give you another one-hand sword fighter who uses ice. And then they also give you a fire ranger that you can use probably one of the best characters in the game just for a range and your ability to aim with the arrows which can be nice now if you guys are playing the safe route we're going to assume that you're playing the safe route here and not going for summoning you can use a lot of the resources that they're going to give you for free for later when you're going to have to do higher level dungeons and take it from me who wasted all of his resources on summons you're definitely going to need them later as you guys progress through the game they are going to give you summons as you do quests, as you get your adventure rank up, they're going to give you summons for free. Now, personally, I recommend saving your summons to only pull every 10 pack, but you're going to do what you feel is best for you, and that's how you're going to get new heroes. Every 10 pack currently, they guarantee a hero uh, or at least a four star weapon, which are the, the pieces of gear that you're definitely going to want to invest in because they come with some very interesting stats. Like this bad boy on normal charge hits have a 30% chance to deal an additional 320% attack damage to enemies within a small radius. What? Like, they come with some crazy stats. So once you guys start getting into your purple gear, um, this is where things are going to start to change. So you guys want to save your primo gems for future content and or limited heroes that you might or might not be able to get at a future date. Then, once you guys have those heroes uh, that you guys are going through and using this to just progress because you guys have focused on a team of two or a team of four, you guys are either leveling up your characters equally or there's one or two of your favorite characters. Like for me, Noel was my favorite with Lisa. So I started leveling those two up. I made sure they had the best gear that I could and they pretty much carried me through the entirety of the game, right? So what I recommend, though, is identifying what heroes you plan to use for a long time and sticking with them at least until you put yourself in a position where then it's OK for you to build as many heroes because it's not going to cost you as much. In the beginning, I found that resources were pretty much everywhere. Chests are everywhere. Everything's everywhere. You had no shortage of resources. So the draw is that you're going to feel like it's going to be like this forever. But the challenge is, is once your characters get higher level, it gets more expensive because your resources cost more. You need higher quality resources. You need to fight stronger things. So in order to do that, you're going to have to flesh out your entire party. So what I recommend doing, especially with the amount of heroes that you're going to be able to get in this game, is to select a team early on and then slowly start to flesh those heroes out. You'll use that gear suggestion that that I mentioned to you guys in the early game that will pretty much carry you or any character from you know 1 to 40 minimum so at that point your characters or your character or characters will be high enough to support you as you go through the game it's a lot easier when you have two one or two or three strong strong characters that can help you with pretty much all the content than to have a full party of four that are generally weak that will cost you time in the end now what's going to happen for my CBT people again this is subject to change once open beta comes out or the actual release comes out but what's going to happen is you guys are going to notice that there's going to be less resources in the world uh, even though they do spawn respawn you know on about a daily basis now even with that respawn time guys there's still going to be a period in between when you're going to run around and you're going to explore this is the opportunity that you're going to take where you find those little blue spirits that are floating around if you guys haven't discovered them and you're going to follow them like these guys right here and they're going to lead you to treasure in the meantime in between time as you guys are playing you guys are also going to want to make sure that you guys pay attention to your domains you'll have this resource called resin and no matter what you're doing throughout the game no matter what it is you you're going to find whether midsummer courtyard this is a great place to start just for overall character xp if you guys are looking to level your characters quickly and you guys are going to use this resin every day since it's easy to get the actual in-game currency well easier to get the in-game currency early because you can get it out of chests you're going to use that to just do your daily refreshes every day it's a total of like 200 or 300 materials and since you guys aren't going to be summoning this is going to speed up your progression okay so then again in the beginning you want to get your economy on lock then after that point you guys will use your resin you guys are doing your story quests all that other jazz it'll help you get the materials and stuff that you need really really quickly to gear yourself up for the future content which this is where things are going to change 
as your world continues to level up, and yes, your world will level up as your adventure rank increases, meaning the monsters that you get will get stronger. So when I started this game, they were like level 16, right? When I was running around the start area, right? You know, 4 to 16, low levels. After I progressed where I'm at now, now I see mobs in the area that are level 49 plus. So they are going to change. And since the monsters in this game and the threats in this game are going to level with you, the necessity for you to get better gear is going to increase. So what you slowly start to see is a decrease in time that you're just running around exploring the world if you guys have already unlocked all the secrets and got most of the chest and you know all that other jazz. And the increase of dungeon content is where this is going to come into play. So the reason why I recommend in the beginning leveling only one to two characters or two main characters is because that's going to allow you to get into co-op content easier with people who are just as strong as you are. Because in co-op you're able to use two characters, right? One, two. And you can use, let's say if you had two level 60s or two level 50s right you can team up with somebody else who also has two level 60s or two level 50s and with a combined level you guys can do more difficult dungeons and you guys can get higher quality gear sooner with that higher quality gear it's going to allow you to boost the capacity of your characters quicker which is going to increase the, the speed that you're able to acquire loot and then you can flesh out the rest of your character so you don't have to rely on others granted if you want to be a little bit patient and you're not the co-op type of player you could just level up the rest of your team and just have four members within the average level range and then you guys can do your content all the while you guys will be rotating in and out of doing co-op content you guys will also be cycling these bosses out so you guys can get your rewards and also participating in world boss fights where I don't want to mention their names just in case and I'm glad they're not on the map right now because I don't really want to spoil them for you which is why I'm not really showing you guys footage if you guys haven't seen them yet I kind of want you guys to experience that for yourself uh, but there are a couple of current bosses in the closed beta that you guys will be fighting to get loot as well also I'd like to draw your attention back to town with this lovely guy Timaeus who is an alchemist okay and what the purpose of the alchemist is is to take materials that you've collected in the world that may or may not be useful to you anymore so you can fuse them to create something new that you might actually need now keep in mind a lot of this drops in the world so you can get this but if you guys are looking for a way to get materials and make use of the items that you had before that aren't currently useful this is where you're going to go don't be afraid to use this guy he's gonna be very 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 helpful so make sure you use him he does level up his inventory levels up as your adventurer rank goes up and for my summon heads out there who are summoning make sure you guys also use the shop as well because you guys will get this resource as a result of summoning right because I did a lot of summons uh, and you can use this as well to buy materials that you'll need for character ascension and stuff like that so again I just wanted to kind of explain the basic overflow you know as you guys are going through the game i mentioned going through the chest and getting all the stuff in the game and utilizing that stuff so you guys can get your characters in here you guys can you know level them up and then eventually send them to increase their level cap and you know utilize all that stuff as you're continuing to improve then you guys are going to move into that because you guys saved your crystals you guys are going to use that to maximize the dungeon xp and co-op until you're able to get enough resources to level up your full party if you guys want to do it solo then you guys can do it solo get your gear get your rewards get in and get out now for those of you guys like me who have wasted all of your your crystals on summons the other way that you guys can get more crystals is by participating in the abyss this is a place that gives you monthly rewards and it also gives you rewards just for participating in the actual thing gives you crystals summons things like that if you guys are just happen to get your summon itch off and you're like but he said I shouldn't summon uh, this is another way that you can do that but with collection of all these things with with the current content I found in the short surmise way is the way to really maximize your production so start the game you're gonna save your resources you're gonna be cooking food making sure that you always have revives on hand and some healing items at least until you get a healer then you're still gonna have revive item on, on items on hand but you're gonna be relying more so on your healer you're gonna focus more on gathering chests and making sure that the main stats on your gear are what matches while you're not paying attention to the substats which are the stats on underneath until much much later as your adventure rank increases and and the difficulty increases then you're going to start paying attention to the gear guide that i'm going to put out and you guys are going to watch that and take note of how i recommend building specific types of characters to maximize your damage output between that ascending your characters doing everything you need to do your dailies your world bosses your dungeons your co-op iterations and whatever content and future content they come out with you can find yourself 
running along very efficiently, creating the team that you want to create. With that being said, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. Hopefully this was a lot of help to you guys that are confused trying to figure out what pathway to go. Again, I'll be putting out the gear guide here shortly uh, so you guys can watch that again. Link at the end of this video for that video. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.